Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll need this later. Mic drop, I heard that. That was good. That was good. How are y'all doing? Are you tired? You ready for another night? No? Yeah, Doug, I see you first. No way. Parking team's like, no, we had everything that we could do. You know, I, I pray you got the rest that you needed last night, and I pray you get the rest that you need today as you go home. That's just after we clean up Fall the Star, right? So let's do that, and then we'll get good rest, okay? I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I've never preached on this day for nine years or ten years now of Fall the Star. This is my first time to preach on the post Fall the Star Sunday. And so I, I was a bit nervous putting this message together. I like to prepare my messages. And this is one that I had to wait. Wait and see what God did through all of your efforts, through the people that came through. And I got to tell you, I'm blown away. And what God reminded me of as I was preparing this last night about 2 a.m. is that it's the stories. That's what we're talking about today. It's everything that God has done through this production. So, what an incredible three nights of Follow the Star we had. You know, over the years, we've had some disappointment, haven't we, when it's come to the weather of Follow the Star. Rain, snow, wind. Can we just praise God real quick for three beautiful nights of Follow the Star? Wow. I don't know if I've ever seen so many people sweat at Follow the Star, right? Whew. It was an incredible production this year. God gave us three beautiful nights to bring the gospel of Jesus to life for thousands and thousands of people who came through this production. And there's a lot of reasons why the 2021 Follow the Star production will be a memorable one. Not only was it our 10th anniversary year, right? But let's be honest for a second. It's the first year here at Good Shepherd where Pastor Marty was not a integral part with direct oversight over this production, right? And we pr proved that while Pastor Martin, he, he is always going to be a part of this production. He, he was and he always will be, and I'm excited for that. But we proved this year that we have skin in the game, that we made follow the star ours, that we can pull it off, right? It is who we are. It is a mission of this church, and I couldn't be prouder of all of you. For the way that this year's production went off. I, I am so proud of all of you. It's all about connecting people to Jesus, right? That's why we do this. This year's production was also the best opening night that we've ever experienced here in 10 years. 2,500 people came through on Thursday night alone, shattering the record by around 600 people. Incredible. On Friday night, over 3,000 people. And last night, if we got the numbers right, it was over 3,500 people alone. That's 9,000 people. 9,000 people that we know of that got to see the story of Jesus Christ come to life over those three nights. And that's a very conservative number. And here's why I know that. I got an email this morning from Doug uh, saying that HCCM, Hill Country Community Ministries, they say that they received more donations, both in money and in food, than ever before. Wow. Praise God for that. I, you know, this community showed up in a big way. Y'all showed up in a big way, and we do praise God. But, you know, I, I really don't care if it was 10,000 or 5,000 or 1,000. You've heard me say that over and over, and I mean it. I really, really do. If one life was changed, it would have been all worth it. And I promise you that one life was changed. This year's production is also memorable for some of its more humorous moments. Uh, things like, you know, in the first year of uh, Follow the Star, we had a donkey go down in the triumphal entry, okay? And I don't even know how we got it out. I don't know if we had to drag it out or what happened in that year. But this year, right... The donkey in triumphal entry, for the first time in 10 years, decided that when nature calls, <laughs> there's no stopping it, right? But I give credit to everyone in that scene for how they handled that. 
especially our kids jumping over it. Way better than I could have done it, I can tell you that, for sure. On top of that, we had a centurion the first night go out to the set without his pants. <laughs> now, can you imagine the people in wardrobe, 30 minutes into the production, looking at this pair of pants on a hanger and saying, somebody forgot their pants. Luckily, they had a tunic or whatever we're going to call it that went past their knees, right? I don't know how I can follow that up. <laughs> wow. There's many reasons that this year's production, this 10th anniversary of Fall of the Star, will be remembered. But for me, the number one reason that I will remember this Fall of the Star over past productions is the past year and a half that we've been through, right? I never want to take for granted again what this production can do for this community. And more important than that, serving alongside each and every one of you. Wasn't there a joy that comes from being around one another and serving with each other this gospel message? Seeing little kids be taught by their parents. It's incredible. Never taking those opportunities for granted again. What an enormous blessing that is. When that enormous NASA dominator light went up in the sky on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, it was as a beacon of hope to this community again. Me and Renee, when we first got that, that uh, Thursday night, the, the dominator went up, we were both a little misty-eyed <laughs> just seeing it again. We didn't realize how much it meant to us. We knew it meant a lot, and hopefully you had the same feeling that you missed Follow the Star. But that light was a hope for all to see as they came here. A light that brought them here to see the true light. The light of Christ, of their Savior. And today I want us to reflect and remember on one of the ways that God, he spreads that hope, that light. And it's through all of us. You see why God, he gives us the vision here of giving witness to his story. And why we need him to be out in front of us bringing this gospel story to life for the people in our community. And it's because of who God has called us to be. In 1 Peter 2, uh, beginning with the ninth verse, it says this. It says, you are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. That you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. See, Peter here, he's giving believers in Jesus kind of a job description, an identity of sorts. That no matter what happens in this life, no matter what you're threatened with, no matter what happens in this life, that we continue to believe in Jesus as our Savior and continue to point others to the Savior. See, God has called us out of or into faith and out of the darkness to the light, the light of his Son to know that we are loved and forgiven. So let me relate this to the production that we just finished here. Whatever any one of you did to support this production, whether you donated your time, your money, your talents, whether you worked behind the scenes, in the scenes, or just praying for everyone at home, whether you were counting the number of people who were coming through, whatever you were doing, whatever you did to support this production, you were involved with bringing that good news of Jesus to thousands of people. You were living out the vision of this church to live a life that begs the question, and boy, were there a lot of questions being asked over those three nights. Some stories that we got from our greeters. There was a little girl, uh, when she was asked what her favorite scene was, her mom said, well, it was the camel at the nativity. The little girl said, no, mommy, it was the cross. Another person said, wow, this production just gets better and better. A parent said, I was really worried about the kids seeing the pilot scene and the crucifixion scene. But by the time we got to the end, I completely agree. They need to see all the story. Someone said, I can't believe we go to, ch to a church nearby and learned about this on TV last year. I'm sad we missed all the other years, but I promise you that we'll never miss another one. Another person said, keep this up. This is the greatest gift any church can give to a community. This is one of my favorite ones. 
Another said, where's your main church building? <laughs> Our greeter replied, you're in it. <laughs> she said, no way. There's no way that you can do all of this with this kind of quality in this size of a church. Said, Absolutely, we can. Just incredible. We are... Uh, there was another one that said, we're going home to tell and call all of our friends to tell them to come next year. This is incredible. This is our first year, and we'll never miss this again. I love that you tell the whole story of Jesus at Christmas. And then there was a lady in line, and she told us that her teenage daughter had a dream about Jesus. And they found out that Follow the Star was happening, and they just had to come. And so they drove in from Marble Falls. Pretty incredible. The favorite scene this year? Same as all the other years. It was the crucifixion scene. The common phrase overheard from the little children besides wanting to be in the Jerusalem scene. You would not believe how many kids told me that they want to come back and be in that scene next year. But other than that, it was why are they hurting Jesus? The most impressive character this year. It's actually a tie. Angel Gabriel did not just take it away this year, right? It was actually uh, Jesus at Pilate and crucifixion. And they were pointing out the makeup that was done. One person actually asked me, is that real blood? <laughs> no, it's not real blood. We didn't hurt them. <laughs> but the most moving story for me personally came on Thursday night as I got home. And uh, Kelly told me that Beckett had been, t <laughs> that boy can talk, right? Uh, and he was talking about follow the star. And uh, finally it was bedtime. And Bailey, who had been quiet, my two-year-old daughter, she just kind of piped in and she said, Jesus hurt, Jesus cried, Jesus lives. Those three phrases from the mouth of a two-year-old, and it touched my heart. It shows that God works, even in the youngest of kids that come through this production. It's why we take the call of Jesus at his ascension, right, very seriously from Acts 1.8. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses. Where? In Jerusalem. In all of? And? And? Yeah, I know you know it. Come on. <laughs> See, we are to be his witnesses. To lift Jesus up. So our community and our friends and our families can see Jesus and connect the dots. It's why we do this production. Seth Willis is our AD at the crucifixion scene, and he captured a picture I want to show on the screen right now of a father and his two young boys. And what he, was, what he was doing, one of his sons was pointing back to the crucifixion, and he heard the boy say, is that man dying for real? His dad said, no, not that man, but another man did. His name was Jesus. And then he took him by the hand and said, let me show you the good news, and he led him to the empty tomb. There was another story at the crucifixion from Seth, and he said that this little boy was just, he was sad at what he was seeing at the crucifixion, and his older sister had run off to see the ascension already, and she came running back, and she said, you're missing the best part. Come with me. I got to show you this, <laughs> and she drug her brother by the hand to show the good news of Jesus. There was a woman was seen at the ascension scene reading the storyboards and hugging her son as they listened to the audio at that scene as well. It's why we do this production. It's proof right there. But you know, I also saw it an another way this year. I saw kids beaming with joy as they saw the empty tomb, as they saw the ascension scene. And what it did is it made their parents smile. And they would drag them to come and see it. And then they would be reminded of God's love for them, that he forgives us. And to see the, the heart of these children impact the hearts of their parents was something that was remarkable to see. Again, it's why we do this. Each and every year we have a few individuals that we like to call up here and kind of get their take on what happened. So I'd like to invite Miss Renee Meredith up here, our producer of Follow the Star. Renee, how was this year compared to other years? <laughs> Much needed. Much needed, yeah. Personally and I think for the community. You were explaining to me on, I think it was Thursday or Friday, about how 
you felt transported back in time. Can you tell them what you were talking about? I was actually talking with one of our Jesus, and the statement that was made is the first three scenes, you're kind of still in Cedar Park. But as you start to walk the production, and you hit the Last Supper, and you go to Betrayal, and Pilate, and the crucifixion, the tomb, and ascension, you're transported. You're transported back in time. It hit me, because I get very technical and logistical in the side of the production, but to have heard that statement, it brought even, after 10 years of doing this, a more realistic view to me. Mm -hmm. If that's just one snippet of what Christ went through for us, can you imagine how much God's love is for all of us? Amen. You were mentioning a, a story of some people who really needed to kind of get to the front of the line for sp specific reasons, but it was a very touching story. Would you tell them about that one as well? Yeah, as everybody knows, my phone number's plastered <laughs> everywhere. So I get this phone call from Salt Lake City, and I was like, do I answer it or not? So I answered, and it was a father with two autistic boys. And those boys had high sensory issues, and they would not make the hour, hour and a half wait to the front of the line. And so he said, is there any way to get, you know, jump the line, basically, so that they can see this production? So it just turned out that Ingrid and Rachel were in the worship center, or community center, sorry. <laughs> and they said that they would be willing to walk through with them. And as those boys got to the triumphal entry, Mario the donkey stopped, and they were able to touch it. They, can't, they could not verbally communicate. But they walked away, and the father at the end said they really enjoyed it and that it was such a blessing for them to see the production. Wow. Incredible. Um, this is your eighth year as producer or ninth? Eighth year as producer. Will you come back for a ninth? If you'll have me. We'll have you. <laughs> Thank you, Amen. Thank you. I wanted a newbie's perspective on Follow the Star this year. We don't get that very often. And so I'd like Mr. Seth Illich to come up here as a guy who came here. He's been here for two years now. Uh, Just what? Just over a year. Just over a year. Okay. Seems like two. Um, <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. But you got here, that's right, in October of mm -hmm. last year. And uh, you got to see Follow the Star in a very different way. I did. With COVID on yeah. TV. Did we do it justice explaining what to expect over these three nights? So I'm going to give credit to Emily Barati for explaining it this way. Um, she said it's a lot like the atmosphere at Texas A&M, that you appreciate it from the inside. You get a full grasp of it, but there's no way to explain it to somebody on the outside, and you can't experience it unless you're in the thick of it. So that's exactly my perspective on Follow the Star. There is no way. There's no words. There's no video. There is nothing they can put this into context until your boots on the ground in the middle of it. Yeah, ha having uh, children as well that are young. I know you got to go through the production yeah. uh, with Emily and Sophia and Soli. What was their reaction to follow so, the star? So the, the gut reaction uh, probably of 90 plus percent of our kids is, is the animals. Oh my gosh, the animals were so cool. <laughs> That's what draws them. That's the hook. But I don't know if you all saw uh, Sophia and Sully over here. I, I know, I know, I know the story. We got that. I, I got to have conversations and to hear them tell it back to me. Yeah. Man, chills. And, and I, I don't think anybody did it as clearly and as concisely as Bailey did. But, <laughs> but to hear their version, it was so cool. Yeah. You were telling me a story last night. We had somebody here that was on a business trip from Miami, saw a light in the sky and was working out at LA Fitness, right? And they yeah. decided to come over. Yeah, so I, I was, uh, I got reassigned last night to, uh, to kind of help control the flow of people coming out of the nativity into the uh, uh, triumphal entry scene. And uh, there's two guys that are walking through that do not look like anybody else. They've got, uh, you know, shorts on and cut off t-shirts and, and big muscular dudes. And they, they pit stop to talk. And I'm like, okay, so what, how are you all here? Like, what, what, did, what brought you all? And uh, they're like, yeah, we were, uh, we're working out at LA Fitness. We're here. Uh, on a, like you said, a business trip. They're working construction on one of the hotels here in Austin, staying here in Cedar Park and working out at LA Fitness. And they, 
we're like, man, what's, what's all the chaos? What's all the parking? What's the light? What, what's everything going on? And the, the guy at LA Fitness said, well, go check out Follow the Star. So they're standing in line, and I'm like, okay, you're all from Miami. What, what brought you? And we got to talking, and one of the guys goes, I was brought up Catholic. And he goes, so we've done passion plays, and we've done stuff. And he goes, I, I just wanted to see what this is all about. So this is right at the beginning. And I'm like, guys, I want to know. I want, when you get all the way through, I want to I wanna try and catch back up with you and hear what you thought. So this is going on. About 20 minutes later, I realized I've been standing there for two hours, and I need to go to the bathroom. So I book <laughs> it. I go down to use the restroom. I go back to where I was at. And I realized that the line has kind of died down. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I look at Donna, who's standing next to me. I'm like, Donna, are you good? She's like, yeah, I'm good. And I take off. I start running towards the end. And they are standing there talking to one of the ladies from Hill Country. They'd been there for 20 minutes talking to her. They were just about to leave when I got to stop and talk to them. And one of the, 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 the one guy, Carlo, that I was talking to, he was real quiet at the front. He goes, I cannot believe the atmosphere, the story, the, the, the ability to tell the story in a way that takes it from a mental image to living it, right. to living in the crucifixion and living in the resurrection and seeing Jesus, being sent, personally sent by Jesus to tell the story. Right. The other thing that they uh, got to share with me, and I, I love this. Uh, so there's two guys, Carlo and Tao. Tao looked at me and he goes, you know, where I'm at, my community, most of our kids don't have any faith. And he goes, it kind of weighs on me. I get kind of cynical about life that the future is going to be in rough shape. And he goes, but I saw hundreds of kids get to hear the story and see Jesus and know his love. And he goes, that alone gives me hope for the future. Amen. You know, you never know how God's going to use stories like that to bring Follow the Star. That's the vision of Follow the Star, right, Pastor Marty? Take this to the nations and to get more churches doing this, right? And who knows? We might see Follow the Star Miami, Miami Vice. That would be awesome. Right? <laughs> I appreciate you, Seth. If I could have Miss Emily Barati come up here, I couldn't leave her out this year. It was such an incredible uh, you know, it's a blessing to have a book that was written about Follow the Star. And one of the major things I was thinking about this year, Emily, with a couple of things is, why did it take us 10 years to think of this, <laughs> right? It, it didn't take us 10 years. It took, yeah. It took me like 10 seconds. Got it. <laughs> um, I've been thinking about this since the first day that my daughter was two. <laughs> what? <laughs> going to happen. My eyes are sweating on the inside. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, the first time we ever did all of this, Ellie was two, and golly. <laughs> I, I would tell it. I just don't know the story. <laughs> I, re I really didn't. Well, I didn't know this was going to happen. I mean, I've been, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> so, um, and uh, Nick was in kindergarten, and um, so we... It was an awesome experience, and we, um, you know, did every everything in triumphal entry and had a great time and everything. But then when we were, you know, I, I brought him their pajamas. They were on their way home, and I was like, okay, well, now what, right? So all these kids go through this, and they see all of the scenes, and it's really inspiring and wonderful. But but now what? How do we reflect? And those of you who know me know that I'm kind of a little bit passionate for kids, and um, just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit, um, and um, and so um, my thing was what, what now? What do we do? And so I was like, somebody needs to write a book. Somebody needs to write a book so that they have a way to reflect on it, so that the parents can be, you know, kind of help them out a little bit, and they need to have some way to talk about it. So that kind of, you know, molded around in my head for many, many years, mm -hmm. and then the deck was built about five years ago or so. And when that deck was built, I was like, this is it. This <laughs> is where kids need to sit. Somebody needs to talk to them. They need to know um, and reflect on what they just saw and talk about it and whatever. And so then 
took me a little bit of time to realize that nobody was going to do that except for me because <laughs> I don't know, because that's just who I am. So um, I started thinking about it and I went to Pastor Marty and like I did not expect to get the overwhelming, excited, like just, yes, do this. This is awesome. Like, and, and I was just like, oh, okay, it's a good idea. Great. <laughs> um, so, um, so then Pastor Marty was like, I totally, you need to talk to Miss Leona. And so Miss Leona and I chatted and, um, she helped me out, get some ideas and just told me, how would you talk to kids? She knows that I like to talk to kids. And so how would you tell it to them? What would you say? What would the things be? And so, um, so I just got on it. And so for years and years, I've just kind of been, you know, writing and thinking and trying to get people to draw for me. And nobody would draw for me, even though I have a family full of artists. Thanks a lot, Dad. And um, <laughs> I, um, so I said, okay, I'll just do it by myself. And so I sat down and started drawing pictures. And I'm not an artist. She is an artist. And I'm not an artist. She is an artist. God just, <laughs> God just drew through me, y'all. And so um, I drew some pictures, and then I said, this needs to be the year. This needs to be the year that we do it. Um, we need to do it for Miss Leona. So we got it done. Yeah, we did. And we worked together, and we got it done. And... I know that she's very proud of me and us for getting it she done. Is. <laughs> Hold on. I got to ask you, with it being the first year out on the deck, how was it? Was were the kids receptive it to it? It was awesome. Everything yeah. I thought it was going to be in more. Um, I don't know that I actually got through the book that many times. Maybe. Um, Maybe two times last night, maybe three times the night before, the couple nights before. But all oh, the conversations, just um, going through and asking them, you know, who was Mary and then getting them to explain to me things and, and just helping them connect, make that connection. Did he stay a baby forever? No, he <laughs> grew up into a man. And then he did, you know. And so, like, all of just and the excitement and the, I don't know, just the energy. I love it. And, um, and just like we had 10 hours of Sunday school and it was wonderful. And, um, just, and so the parents so appreciative. And so, yes, it was everything I thought it'd be plus more. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Emily. Appreciate it. Yeah. She really is an artist. <laughs> you got to see the, the pictures in that book. Uh, they are all drawn to uh, depict the fall of the star scenes as you know it and love it. It's why we do this, again, to connect those dots. And we saw that happening on the deck with kids uh, like never before because it was put in a way and written in a way that they could understand. Let's hear some more of those comments from our greeters, though. They said, you can feel the spirit in this church from the parking crew to the actors. Everyone is spreading the Christian spirit. What a gift to all of us. I had a, a couple of people ask me if we hire all 300 of our actors, <laughs> and do we pay them? The answer was no, we do not. But, you know, I started thinking after 10 years, maybe you are, you are professionals because it, it just keeps getting better and better. I can tell you that. There's another story that a woman uh, approached the greeters and asked for some tissues. She said that there was someone that was breaking down and crying uh, that they were walking behind someone who was having a hard time. And when they talked to her, she said that every time that she kept turning on her radio, uh, Stephanie, thank you for the ads that were going out, but every time she, she turned on her radio, she kept hearing about this production called Follow the Star and felt compelled to come here. She then broke down and said that she lost her only child four years ago at Thanksgiving and said this was exactly what she needed. They were told not only did this production touch this grieving mother, but it touched all who witnessed this. She said it was no coincidence that God put them all together in that moment at that time. And she wanted me to pass on a huge thank you to everyone at Good Shepherd and ask that we keep doing what we are doing because it's making a difference in so many lives. Next one, next comment we received is, you guys are doing this right. It's only going to get bigger 
and bigger. And for some reason, I think he's right. Follow the star is only going to continue to get bigger and bigger. And another comment I heard uh, throughout the three nights is, wow, you guys haven't stopped. You keep improving these sets, right? They said, that's not normal. They were being very intentional with me. That's not normal. Usually people build something and they just let it be. But the continued investment in to follow the star shows that we are serious about what we're doing here. And they said, I can't wait to see what you guys do next year. What scene are you going to do? I said, I don't know. <laughs> That's, we'll, we'll talk about that in January or February, right, Doug? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Every year, you know, we all want to know three things. How many people came through? Well, we know at least 9,000, but I bet you it was upward of 10 to 11. We want to know how much food and money did people give to HCCM. Tons of food and thousands of dollars, guaranteed. How many people got saved? No clue. As Pastor Marty always tells us, we don't know that on this side of eternity, but I do look forward to maybe God unveiling uh, what Follow the Star has done in so many people's lives because he uses his word. He tells us in Isaiah 55 that his word goes out from his mouth and it will not return to him empty, but it will accomplish what he desires and achieve the purpose for which he sends it. Last night I, I alluded to a story that came in that I thought was um, incredible. It moved me to tears. As I got it yesterday afternoon with Seth and Jordan in the office, and uh, I want to share that one with you right now. It came through a social media message. She writes, hi there. I came through Follow the Star last night with my eight-year-old. I'm still trying to put into words what God did for me through this production. This past year, I lost my mom to COVID. She was everything to me. My best friend, my rock the person I could always go and talk to. She had an unwavering faith in God which always inspired me. And I've been searching for answers as to why God would take her from me and my family when she was so healthy and full of life just earlier this year. I've never found any answer that I, I thought was satisfying, until last night, that is. I sat and wept at the scene where Jesus is on a cross for what seemed like forever. My daughter sat silently beside me holding my hand, and it's exactly what I needed in that moment. But what hit me and what brought me out of this grief that I've been experiencing now for three to four months is when my eight-year-old daughter said, you know Jesus loved Grandma, right? And then she pointed to Jesus on the cross and said, look. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks that God isn't to blame for this. He's to be praised for giving us Jesus. And I believe I'll see my mom again, and this time it'll be for eternity where there is no tears because of what Jesus has done for us. For the first time in months, I got a full night's rest knowing that I'll see my mom again someday. Thank you for putting on this production. It helped in ways that you'll never know or any way that I'll be able to express to you. Thank you. I felt compelled to share this story with you. Never, ever stop doing this production. Praise God. This woman's life was changed. A struggling mom, daughter, was able to get some rest. Rest in the Lord because of what he's done for us in Jesus. See, I can't wait to see what happens for Follow the Star next year. I can't wait to see what Follow the Star is in 10 years from now. And the kind of stories that will come out of it over the next 10 years, if it's anything like the first 10, well, we're in for some, some life-changing things, aren't we? What an honor it is to serve along all of you, to bring this story, the greatest story ever told, to life so that others can connect the dots. Let's take a look at the screens and see the 2021 Follow the Star production. Thank you. 
I love all of you. <laughs> it's such a, an honor to uh, just be part of this church. I hope you feel the same way. Uh, this film that we just saw, what it does more than any other year that I've seen, is it shows the faces of people and kids connecting the dots, the emotion, the raw emotion that the gospel story brings to life. It's there. It's happening. It's all about living out that, that vision of having people ask the question, of who is Jesus and pointing them back to the cross and the resurrection. Thank you for all that you've done this year. I mean it. That is uh, the trailer video. I know you saw the video that we were doing at the end of Friday night. We were out there very late, and uh, that's going to be coming to us in the coming weeks. So we look forward to seeing that behind the scene production as well. And again, thank you. Follow the Star 2021. Tenth year. Wow. What an incredible production. Let's go to.